right, it's a Saturday night shop hang. And we're going to do some rocket stuff. We're going to put some fins on. So start sanding, son. What am I sanding? Motor tube for <laughs> adhesion. Because lock tubes come with a glossine layer and epoxy doesn't stick to it very well. So the Gorilla Epoxy is going to be put to use again. Mix up some epoxy. We're going to use this brush to get it in as deep as we can. Hopefully lay a pretty sizable amount so it'll kind of craft a fillet around the front here. Hopefully we won't have to try and feed anything from the top. Should be pretty solid. It's not a very big rocket. It was pretty fun. Went in a little far, but there we go. Just trying to get it flush. So the root of this fin's already sanded. Brendan sanded the motor tube, so we're going to pop the first fin in. It's going to start looking like a rocket. Going yellow forward. All right. So we're going to put this fin in. Push it firmly against the motor tube. It's a good stuff. It's looking pretty straight to me. The first fin's tacked in place and uh, nice and dry there. So we're going to slam this next one in. This hole is a little bit bigger than the others, so keeping it straight is going to be a bit more of a concern. The other one was real tight fit. You did a good job because that one was real easy to line up. This one's going to take a little bit more precision. But uh, yeah, so far so good. We're leaving the pin, the fins painted for the time being because the decals let us make sure all the fins are going the right way because there's just a slight difference in uh, the pitch of the fins. I don't know if that's the right word to use. They they lean one direction so uh, I it's not really an issue if they go one way or the other but we just have to make sure they're all going the same direction so we're gonna use the decals. Alright well it's 3 30 in the morning. Fin looks pretty straight to me. Alright one more fin. It's been sitting for about an hour. Should be pretty well tacked in there. So now take her out and stack it up as a real rocket for the first time. Well, I guess not the first time. The first time with the fins glued in place. Sand that piston a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like a rocket. Look at that. No fins are falling out. Alright, well, I'm not going to end the video here since we're doing once a week, but uh, next uh, clip you're going to be seeing is us making fillets and then we'll start painting it. Someone complained about the uh, shakiness of the camera so I'm going to go get the tripod for the fillets but... Oh, they don't know. No. <laughs> Boy are they in for a treat. <laughs> um, my car channel, I've got about 40,000 subscribers and that's kind of a well known thing with me is the camera's always sideways or shaking really bad so... Yeah, the hat never stays straight. It's, it's good stuff. <laughs> but I gave him the rundown on how we're going to do it. We're doing it the way Crazy Jim taught me. If you're watching this gym, get well soon. We want to see some rockets flying at Airfest. Oh yeah, we're trying to go to Airfest, by the way. Oh, we're trying to go to Airfest, by the way. Oh, also we got a package from Wildman. Ordered some Aeropack stuff. 38mm for Brennan's rocket. A 54mm for my... Uh, AMW Pro X Red Max and a 75 54 adapter for my Goblin and my Performance Red Max and all the other 75mm stuff I got. So while those are drying, we can go ahead and throw your arrow pack on. I also got a centering ring from Wildman for the rocket that'll probably be featured next week's video. But it's a uh, four inch Big Bertha upscale that the same guy who gave me this rocket gave me as well. It's just not finished. It needed a aft centering ring and it needs fillets and painted and it's Public Missiles Quantum Tube, which I wouldn't have gone with, but it's got a Scott Glass nose cone on it, and it's super cool.
All right, so I figured you guys saw the fillets once. You don't need to see all of them getting done. So those are done. We kind of already started sanding this one out, but we're going to smooth it out. And then uh, he decided on the color. He wanted more of a fluorescent yellow, but for the sake of doing it quickly, we're using Rust-Oleum because it dries in 20 minutes. Krylon has fluorescence, but I always manage to get Krylon to crack. So uh, we're going to sand these down and throw a sketchy coat of night primer on it. That way we can see all the stuff we need to fill with Bondo and then I'll get to making it look nice. Also the arrow packs on. Love these things. They're all sanded. You can see right here, I put some masking tape on the fins. Just to, you know, reminder of the past, we're keeping these stickers visible. We're just gonna leave this area masked. So there's a stripe with the sticker in it as a reminder of what it once was and how far it's come. It's not gonna fit the paint scheme even slightly, but it'll be cool. Having a floor jack is a plus for painting rockets. Holds them up very nicely. So we're just gonna throw a quick tack coat down, let it dry up, and then put some real coats on there. And then assess what we need to fill. Alright guys, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Rocket Vlogs. We hope you enjoyed watching it. Join us next week when we uh, get some color on this thing and hopefully take out a lot of the nuisances I'm looking at right now. But uh, There's so many. Yeah, <laughs> what happens when you fiberglass an airframe? You're like, oh, I'll smooth it out and then you paint it and you're like, oh yeah, no I won't. It'll be fine. <laughs> uh, if you guys enjoy what you're seeing, make sure you press the like button, leave a comment and hit the subscribe button. It'll notify you anytime we upload a video and it's absolutely free. If you want to support us more, you can check out Impulse Tees on Amazon. It's a bunch of Rocket t-shirts I designed. There's a bunch more coming, but I've got a few up thus far. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Five, four, three, two.